advocate, and I'd like to invite you at this time uh, to ask them any question that you wish. I knew it would be Jerry Houseman. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Is this working? You may not thank her. Well, it, it's obvious to me we're dealing with a very complicated problem, set of problems. It's also obvious that we're in a context of um, lots of people advocating lobbying, whether it's pharmaceuticals or guns or tax reform, and, and somehow the arts community has not yet got its act together. Together, it can be a, an extremely powerful and influential voice. But in its current state, we have so many uh, competing organizations, some struggling for survival, some focusing on their own interests and needs. And so it falls, Ra, to the alliance to uh, work toward getting the act together in a cohesive, coherent, and effective manner. Now, I wonder, how, what, what are the priorities? How are you going to be doing this? How are you organized? What are the, uh, obviously, you're not going to do it alone. Uh, I'm involved with the um, Chicago Artists Coalition. How are you related to the coalition? How are you related to the museums and other arts organizations to effectively uh, get this job done? Maybe it's an unfair, unfair question, but okay, somehow no, uh, we, we've got to get at it. I think, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, a, a couple of thoughts in response to the question. I think the challenge that we face as arts advocates is that we're competing against clutter. Uh, you have folks who are looking to advance uh, universal health care, and, and sometimes there presents a clear enemy in you know, the insurance industry. Or you have folks who are looking to, uh, who are um, environmentalists, and there are, are clear enemies potentially in big oil. Um, with the arts, we're really competing against other interests. And the question is, how can we mobilize, uh, how can we bring ourselves together to, to raise the arts uh, in terms of uh, in people's radar screens and raise the profile of the arts? I, I think um, a couple of things. I think tonight is a great step. Uh, you know, I would like to thank the Chicago Arts Coalition for organizing this event and inviting people in to talk about the issue of, of advocacy. I think in terms of the work of the Alliance, uh, the Alliance has a 25-year uh, track record and history of success uh, in this endeavor. Uh, we, we must remember that the organization is statewide. Um, we, we go from uh, Carbondale to Chicago, from Oak Park to East St. Louis. Uh, our charge in the, the months and years ahead will be to identify, nurture, and support a network of, of advocates. Uh, and how do we do that? I, I think we do it in two ways, and I think some of those pieces have been talked about tonight. Uh, the, the first piece is technology. Um, we can't be everywhere at once, uh, but we can maximize technology and improve the ways that we communicate uh, with our constituents. Uh, the other thing that we can do is build a network. Uh, and we'll, we'll be working with colleges and universities throughout the state to develop satellites and networks of advocates that we can call on and, and mobilize. So I, um, I welcome the challenge. I look forward to the challenge. And, and what I've enjoyed most uh, during my tenure is, is the people. Uh, we have great people uh, in our industry and in our field. And I look forward to working closely with them. And I think tonight is a good step in that direction. Any other questions? And Jerry, I look forward to talking more, and I know that you're going to play a role in, in advancing this effort. Any other questions for our, our wonderful elected official, public servant, and, and advocate? Here's a question, two questions, one in the back and one right here. How can we... How can we leverage our relationships with aldermen who support the arts to influence those other aldermen who are on the fence? I mean, is that, do you have examples perhaps, or? I'm still learning the ropes, but maybe you know. But, um. We've got before the city council an ordinance that the mayor proposed <clears throat> to, in their, in, in their description of it, streamline the public arts commissions uh, that the Public Building Commission has to issue every time they build a new building or, or do any construction. And uh, some of your colleagues have contacted my office and the offices of a couple other aldermen. I think they've reached out to you, Scott. 
um, that this streamlining, streamline, uh, streamlining of the process is, is more of a way to control it and put it in, in, in the Department of Cultural Affairs bailiwick with no p public oversight and open meetings acts applying to it. And, and at the last city council, Alderman Flores and I deferred and published that ordinance. And we've been hurriedly m talking to all our colleagues to try and uh, impose on them and uh, inform them that this ordinance really isn't good for the arts community because most of the arts community that I've talked to is against it. And uh, we want to streamline the process, but we don't want it to, um, uh, to be behind closed doors. It needs to be out in the open. I tell you that because we right now need you to do exactly what you asked. How? You need to call them. Uh, you need to know, first of all, where your alderman stands on this ordinance. Uh, the defer and publish uh, is a parliamentary maneuver that requires the mayor to then publish the ordinance before we get the vote. It only delays the vote by one meeting. Because once they publish it, they'll bring it up again and they'll vote on it. Uh, right now, I don't know that we have uh, the votes to stop it or amend it. Uh, we're, lo we're lobbying our, uh, our, our colleagues and possibly when we'll be presenting amendments, but your question was how can you get your alderman to influence? The first question I'll ask is, is your alderman on board? Uh, and then the second question is, that's up to him or her uh, on how much influence he or she feels he, they have within our city council. Uh, because some of us, and you know, but Scott, you'll, you'll appreciate this, some of us walk into city council meetings sometimes, and our friends, in my case, Joe Moore will come up and say, hey, Rick, I've got this ordinance I'm presenting. Can you just sign it so I can, I, I'm going to submit it? Because it happens fast. And then I'll say, well, what's, what's the bottom line? What's it about? Oh, it's this issue in my neighborhood. I need to hold, it's a resolution about the CTA because they're doing something in my neighborhood. Just, I need some co-signers. Just sign it. Joe, I trust. And I trust him to bring me sensible legislation. So uh, because I trust him, I'll sign it. If one of the other aldermen that I don't trust come to me and say, hey, Rick, I need you to sign this uh, ordinance that I'm going to propose because it does this, this, and this, and this, I say, you know, give me a copy. I'm going to read it, and I'll get back to you in half an hour. <laughs> because there's that level of kind of interaction with different aldermen because of the politics. Uh, so uh, your, my first question is, is your alderman with you on the public arts ordinance position? And then you need to ask him or her, uh, you know, whether or not they can influence maybe some of their neighbors uh, or just other alderman that they have relationships with? <laughs> that actually depends on the issue because there are no permanent enemies or permanent allies, just permanent interests. Uh, and uh, it, there's f 49 of them that I'm still trying to figure out. Scott and I worked together on the campaign in, in, in Berwyn, so I know that I can trust him. Uh, and there's about a, maybe another 10 to 15 that I'll say, okay, I'll sign your stuff without reading it. But the other uh, 35, I'll have to back up, read the legislation, and then see if I want to sign it. I think there was a question in the back. Let me collect my thoughts. I was interested in 